we are the random e-waste and and recycling facility. What exactly happens here? I'll be bringing you all that. And how much has the government of Rwanda invested in this particular facility? Is the EU waste and recycling facility? Let's see what happens and what goes on here and what can we learn from that as a country back home in Rwanda. With the electronic waste facility, all old electronics ceases to be a problem for Rwandans. The recycling facility is expected to save the country from environmental hazards and create thousands of green jobs. In 2014, the government invested about 1.3 million US dollars to establish the facility under its national e-waste management strategy that seeks to establish sustainable recycling industries. The project is conducted by the Ministry of Trade and Industry and National Climate Change and Environment Fund together with other supporting institutions. The overall objective of the project is to offer an end-of-life solution for electronic and electrical waste, allowing a sustainable use of information communication technology, ICT, in the country by preventing the negative impact of electronic waste on the health or the environment once the equipment has reached its end of life. With the plan to become an ICT hub, which requires computers and other gadgets, Rwanda has so far imported tons of equipment that's disposing of these gadgets when they become old and irreparable and can become a huge challenge. But apparently your gadget can return to life and serve the young generations if you throw it in the e-waste treatment plant. E-waste recycling facility program manager explains how electronic waste is sorted. The Rwanda Green Fund is a national, it's a government institution. Um, and it was one of the first green funds that was set up um, in, in Africa. Um, and Rwanda was one of the first countries to be accredited by the Green Climate Fund, um, which is the International Climate Finance Institution. Um, and really, the fund is a demonstration of Rwanda's commitment to green growth, to environmentally friendly development. Um, and the e-waste is a really tangible, uh, this facility is a really tangible example of that. Uh, when you are longer uh, using your electronic or electrical equipment, we are talking about um, computers, TVs, fridges, all those um, electronic, electronic and electronic waste. There are around um, 650 types of, of electronic waste, so you see it's, it's, a, it's a big number. And um, in Rwanda, when we did the inventory, we focused on, uh, on few, on 20 types, especially which are common in Rwanda. And uh, we set up this facility basing on, on the quantities. So when we did the inventory, we have seen um, so many problems. You know, uh, U.S. is not only a, a problem for Rwanda, but for the whole African and, and, and global. It's a global problem because um, we are replacing the gadgets. You, you, you don't, your, your, your computer, your telephones, you are replacing it each year. So uh, there was no solution really to, to this electronic and electric waste. The government used to lend warehouses and you know, people want, used to keep it at their homes. So now uh, we wanted, one of the objective was to provide a solution on that. And in terms of, uh, like David said, Rwanda wants to become uh, a technological hub and government has promoted uh, so many initiatives. You know, the one laptop per child I think you had, uh, computer for schools, you know, the cashless economy, all those, um, and also the uh, ICT penetration in the rural areas. For the moment, almost 87% of Rwandans, they use uh, mobiles, mobile phones. So you see um, the quantities of e-waste were growing. So the first objective was to provide a solution um, on, on the waste from those electronic equipment. And the second objective was to protect the environment. You know, Rwanda is very, is very keen to environmental protection. And uh, in this electronic and electronic waste, we have uh, some toxic and hazardous materials. So when you dump it anywhere or keep it at your home or just dump it to the landfill, uh, you may contaminate uh, even the human, the human health but also the, the environment, soil, water, and so on. I, I think you have seen it uh, in, in some countries where, for example, people coming from Ghana, they know uh, the, the Agobashil and so on, where people burn the waste on, on, the, on the landfill. We do not want to reach um, uh, that situation, but also 
uh, if you go to landfill in Rwanda, before this facility you could see uh, cables, monitors and so on. So uh, the environmental protection and human health was very keen. And also um, we wanted to recover. We don't want to waste valuable materials that are in, the, in this electronic and electronic waste because you know you, you have aluminium inside, you have copper in the cables, you have uh, precious metals in the circuit board, you, you will see all of that. So the second objective was actually to be more resource efficient and recover uh, all those uh, valuable materials that are uh, in the waste. Uh, the last objective was to, to create uh, jobs, green jobs for, for, for local people. And uh, so far, through the people who have been uh, uh, employed during the construction and even including the technician we have, the facility has been employing, um, has created more than 300 uh, green jobs. So you see, uh, and, and, and the facility will create more because, uh, as David said, we are creating a collection point around the country and, uh, and people will be uh, employed in the, in the, in the collection of, of, of this e-waste. So um, we have two, um, two, two departments here, and uh, the first one here is the dismantling uh, department, and there we have the refurbishment department. So um, starting on the flow diagram that we use, when we, we collect e-waste uh, using different mechanisms, uh, we do business to business, we, do, uh, we partner with other companies that does uh, solid waste uh, collection and we do door to door and also um, there may be some take back or drop of people dropping their e-waste here. So when we collect e-waste we, um, we segregate because there are different types so we, you are going to see it inside how we do uh, the separation and then we, we, uh, we do the testing. We do the testing why? Because uh, we want to see if this, some of these equipment are still uh, working so that they can be reused and actually uh, when we see that they have a minor problem we put them into the refurbishment department you may find for example uh, a computer uh, from government institution only missing a battery so we add a battery or missing cables or missing the cpu and so on so we add it and uh, we in the refurbishment we refurbish it uh, in the refurbishment department, we have uh, an agreement with uh, the Rwanda Education Board. So for all the refurbished computers, we, we, send, them to, we send them back to schools. So uh, you are going to see it inside there. We have so far refurbished 400 computers. And uh, this century, we have donated uh, 200 computers to, to, schools, to, lo to schools that are, are, are near here. Meanwhile, there are two ways of carrying the e-waste the recycling plant. One can call the plant manager to come and collect gadgets or can decide to transport them to the plant. Institutions with e-waste stores make the collection easy. Once at the plant, the e-waste is segregated, a system which consists of grouping the waste into categories and then tested to see the ones that are repairable. Those that are found repairable are kept aside while the rest is smashed. The new plant plans to set up electronic waste collection points in all 30 districts of the country. It has so far created about 200 jobs. Apart from recycling, the new e-waste facility has started refurbishing computers and distributing them in secondary schools to help students to grow their technology dreams. The plant has engaged in this initiative as part of its corporate responsibility besides its core business. So far, 400 computers collected from stores in government institutions and non-governmental organizations have been refurbished and 200 of them have been distributed to 10 schools in districts neighboring the plant as part of the agreement with Rwanda Education Board. The computers will be able to aid schools lacking computers for schools, teachers and the school administration.